is y is ax equals lambda x. Interesting. You know, why am I doing this? Why, why, why are characteristic values and vectors, eigenvalues, eigenvectors even going to show up? What sort of problem would occur? And here's an example. Consider the following related rates problem. I have two tanks. I have tank A. I have tank B. Tank A is 200 liters and tank B is 200 liters. And I have a pipe going into A. I have a pipe from A into B. I have a pipe from B back into A. And I have a pipe leaving B. And into the first tank, I am piping in 15 liters per minute of pure water. Which means that if this is a closed system, I really don't care that these two are doing any mixing at all. This is a mixing system. And so these are mixing, but in the end, what should be what has to be coming out this end? 15 liters per minute. So I'm pumping in. I, all I do is I have these two tanks that are going to do a mixing property, and I just simply turn on the valve, and stuff comes out the other side. Now what happened is in my first tank, I started off with at time equals zero, this had 60 grams of salt. In B, at time equals zero, it started off with zero grams of salt. And I have a restricted flow. I have 20 liters per minute going from A into B, but I only allow five liters per minute from B back to A so that we have a 15 out, right? At what's coming out of B? 20, right? Five there, 15 here. What's coming into B? 20, right? And if I would look at this, I could say things like, okay, uh, I amount of salt, and so that's what I'm going to have here. I'm going to say that YA is going to be defined as the salt in A and YB is going to be the salt in B. And for the time equals zero, I notice that YA at zero is 60, but YB at zero is zero. Now I turn it on. I'm going to need some equations. Well, this is related rates. So obviously rates are going to somehow be involved here. And what should start happening to the salt over time in A? It should start decreasing, right? What should happen to the salt in B? Increase. And then something should happen, right? Is it going to, weak? Is it going to reach equilibrium? Is it eventually all going to go to zero? If it keeps dumping out the one end, if I could put a little thing in and say, Add a little bit where this is dumping a little salt, but for now, you know what's happening on this mixture process. You know, I would like what I'm interested in is I want to find how much salt in tank A is changing with respect to time, and how much salt in tank B is changing with respect to time. I'd like to find these functions, but what I know is simply rates. Well, I can at least say this, that the change in the amount of salt in A over time is going to have to be the rate in minus the rate out. Pretty brain dead, right? What is the rate of change? It's going to be how much is coming in minus how much is coming out. Okay. And this is what? Salt. 
So y prime of a is equal to rate n. Yeah, but didn't you say that what's going into a is coming out of b instantly, so wouldn't the, the rate's constant, right? Yeah, but we're talking about that you're talking about volume of fluid. I'm talking about change in what is y prime? This is equal to salt per time, right? This isn't volume. This isn't liters per time. It's salt per time. So you're looking at the change in salinity all the time. Yes. Okay. So how much salinity is? How many pipes are coming into A? Two. How much salinity is coming in from this pipe? Well. Why is it zero? Because it was 15 liters per minute times what? Zero grams per liter. And so that's just a zero plus, all right, I have this pipe, which is five liters per minute. So what is it? It is five liters per minute times... Not zero, but measure salt content in B. YB. YB grams per 200 liters. So we're okay with that. YB is a function of time. But it's a it's a function of time, but it's still a metric. And so what happens? The liters cancel, right? Okay, minus how many things are flowing out? For 20 liters per minute. Just one tank out, so it is 20 liters per minute. Times YA over the 200 liters. YA grams divided by 200 liters. The liters cancel. And so I wouldn't have to write the constants, but these are all going to be grams per minute, right? So I know that Y prime A is equal to what? Well, that's a zero. What's this? What's five two hundredths? One. 40th YB, but this will be in grams per minute, and this will be what? What's 20 divided by 200? And all of this is like I expect. It's grams per minute. But since it's incorrect units, grams per minute, a lot of times we'll just not say it. And since A goes before B, I'm going to write it this way. Negative one-tenth YA <coughs> plus 140th YB. Now those are functions over time, right? All right, on the other hand, uh, what's Y prime of B? It's going to be rate in minus rate out. But what's the rate in? It's going to be the out of, right? Yeah. The, it has one in, and it's the out of A. What was the out of A? <coughs> it was that guy right there. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and write negative one-tenth YA. Is it the same, the sign goes with it? Uh, plus, thank you. Yeah, because the sign was actually that sign. Yeah. And then, that's how much is coming <coughs> in. And then minus what's leaving. Hopefully it's going into 140th YB. Right. And so we got this and this. And, <coughs> and the 15. Right, we got the 15 and the 5. But the 15 and the 5 are both going to be multiplying the same thing, which is YB over 200. Right, so really if we would look at this, to do it right, this would be 5 times YB over 200 plus 15 times YB over 200, right? Which could just be 20. Which is, you could take the YB over 200, and that's a 20, and that's again 110. So, so that's one tenth of YB. So I have one tenth YA minus one tenth <coughs> of YB. All right, let's write both of those things down. I found that y prime of a was, since I erased it, I already wrote things down here, 
negative one tenth ya plus one fortieth yb and y prime b is equal to a one tenth ya and then minus one tenth yb. I look at that and it's like, well, so this is a differential equation. But it's not just differential equation. There's two of them. And so really what we have is how do I solve systems of differential equations? If I would go ahead and, all right, this is the derivative of one function and the derivative of a second function. So this means please solve for the two functions. Where the derivative of the first function is always negative one tenth of the first function plus one fortieth of the second function. The derivative of the second function is equal to one tenth of the first function minus one tenth of the second function. Please solve for these two functions. If I wanted to make my life a little bit easier, if I could just take this problem and say, let's go ahead and call y and vectorize it. Let's just call this ya and yb, right? Let's store the first function in the first position and the second function in the second position. If I do that, then the, it's pretty straightforward that what's y prime? Well, derivatives will just simply go through positions, and so that is y prime of a, that is y prime of b. That means that this system in our example has become y prime is equal to negative one tenth, one fortieth, one tenth, negative one tenth times y. And if I would call that thing a, call this A, then our system of differential equations is simply Y prime equals A Y. <coughs> Where A is a metric matrix, Y is a vector, but it's a vector of functions. I was like, well, okay, why am I talking about eigen stuff? Well, at least I have A times something. <laughs> eigen stuff says A times something needs to be a constant times the thing, right? That's an eigenvalue. I'm going to have to have A times Y is a constant times Y. Is that going to show up in this problem? Well, if I look at that and I say, well, that kind of looks familiar, right? In a one-dimensional problem for differential equations, we had things like, what if I gave you y prime is equal to 3y? How do you solve that? Anybody remember? This is a separable equation. All right, how do I solve this? Well, y prime is dy dx is equal to 3y. This is really 1 over y dy is equal to 3 dx. That is really, what's the integral of 1 over y? Natural log of y is equal to 3x plus a constant. But that means, how do I get rid of the natural log? I use its inverse function, which is? So y is equal to e to the 3x plus a constant, but if I add powers, that's just a constant times e to the 3x. In other words, something that looks like this has what as a solution? Exponentials. So what's a common technique in differential equations? Guess. <laughs> what function solves this? I don't know. I'm going to guess. And then after you guess, you check. And if your guess worked, good guess. It's a common technique to solve differential equations. So if one dimensional, the solution is exponential, 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and guess. If 1D had e to the x type solutions, I'm going to guess exponential solutions for this whole y prime equals a y. So I'm going to guess that I'm going to say, all right, that had an exponential solution, so y, which was equal to, this was a, this is a ya and a yb function. I'm going to guess that both of those functions are going to be something times e to a power, I'm going to write lambda for some odd reason, and something <laughs> times e to a power, and I'm going to write lambda for some odd reason. Yes, that's lambda t. Sorry, so it has to be a function of t. So I'm going to guess that my function is exponential for both of them. And what did I notice that linear? It was what? A constant <coughs> times whatever this thing was to the to the variable, right? And since uh, I could have made this thing t's, and that would have been 3t, right? So I'm going to assume lambda t, and why I'm writing lambda t, you'll see in a bit. All right. So now we're going to check. Let's check. If, but this thing is simply a e to the lambda t is on both of those. That's e to the lambda t all times x1, x2, which is equal to e to the lambda t x. So let's check if y equal to e to the lambda t x is a solution to y prime equals a y. Well, what do we do? Um, what's y prime? If y is that, what's the derivative of that? What's the derivative of the, I'm taking the derivative with respect to t. What's the derivative of the exponential? It's the exponential times the derivative of the power, which is lambda. And then that's just numbers, so that's just a constant. That's not going to change. But wait a second, what's that? That's y. Ooh. Wow, the derivative is lambda y. Okay. Um, the only way that we have a solution would mean that, so I took the derivative, so let's put the, let's replace that on the left hand side. So this y prime equals a y becomes lambda y equals a y. Well, these equalities work as long as lambda is what? An eigenvalue of a. So my entire problem is, it's like, well, that's an eigenvalue problem. So if lambda is an eigenvalue of a, then y equal to e to the lambda t times x is a solution. And, whoops, eigenvalue of a with the x being corresponding vector. It worked. <clears throat> So that automatically tells us back on our problem. If you want to solve the solution to y prime equals negative one tenth, one fortieth, one tenth, negative one tenth of y is 
all functions y equals to e to the lambda t x, where lambda is an eigenvalue of a with x the corresponding eigenvector. Um, question. Not mm -hmm. follow exactly what you did here. Um, so you you proved what the uh, what solving y would be in a differential type of situation, and then you applied that to this. And since that was true, ergo that uh, lambda must be an eigenvalue. No, the only way to get a solution is for it to be an eigenvalue. Yes. Yeah, so, so if you put in eigenvalues, you immediately have that this yes is a solution. It's only going to be a solution if the eigenvalues with eigenvectors. And so that ends up being that, and if, again, if you would write this, that would mean that when I looked at this, we had x1 e to the lambda t, x2 e to the lambda t, which tells me that this function is ya and this function is yb. Yeah. So we found the two functions. They're both exponential functions. The coefficient in front of the this is the first coordinate of the corresponding eigenvector to lambda. And the second is the second coordinate of the eigenvector to lambda. And it's e to the lambda t, where lambda is the eigenvalue. So these are exponential solutions, which is what we would expect, right? You would expect exponential decay or exponential increasing if you were dumping in pure salt or a brine salt of some sort. So what this up part did just simply said, if we guess at an answer, I guess it's going to be an exponential. And if the answer is yes, it will be exponential, but it's a specific exponential where the power is an eigenvalue. So this is particular to this problem? No, all problems. So all what problems. this tells us is if you set up any mixing problem, yeah. all of these mixing problems would end up being, no matter how many, it's like if you have three tanks, you're going to have three functions, right? So this tells us that for a mixing problem, related rates, differential equation system would end up being that what is my first function for the first tank, second, all the way up to the nth tank or whatever. I have n independent things. I take their derivatives, right, is going to end up being that if you tell me how they're all attached, I'm going to get a matrix A. And, it's all, and this all multiplies y1, y2, up to yn. In other words, what we have is the rate of change on y1 is a linear combination, which is row 1 of A, of these functions. And then through this entire system, has as a solution, the solution is just simply going to be yi is equal to the xi e to the lambda t. Right? where lambda has x eigen, so eigenvalue lambda has eigenvector x, which is made up of what? x1 down to xn. So okay. every one of these equations are exponential, and whoever is in front of the exponential curve is just whichever coordinate on the eigenvector, and we just put lambda t. That's it. Now, you just have to find A, and that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, once you find A. But the problem then becomes is, well, this says that if you have an eigenvalue, but how many eigenvalues do you have? We'll have N of them. So that means if I'm going to have how many solutions to this? N of them, right? And what did you do in differential equations when you had multiple functions? that solve the same thing. Say the sine curve, the sine function worked for your differential equation and the cosine function worked for your differential equation. What did you then do to those two functions to make one answer? The general equation, which is a, starts with an L, linear combination. As long as those functions were linearly independent, 
right? You would take the Ron scan, show that they're linearly independent, and then you would just simply put them under a linear equation, say it's a combination. So if sine solved it and cosine solved it, you know, what'd you do? What for multiple solutions? Say the second derivative was equal to, sorry, second derivative plus the function was equal to zero. What functions do that? What's your derivative sign? And what's the derivative of cosine? So the second derivative of sine plus sine is zero. All right, what's the derivative of cosine? Minus sine. What's the derivative of minus sine? Minus cosine. So the second derivative, this has two solutions. Y1 was equal to sine x and y2 is equal to cosine x. But these are linearly independent of each other, so what would you say? Y was equal to a sine x plus b cosine x is the solution. We would put them in linear combinations, right? If you had two solutions which are independent, you just put them together with a constant, and that's your one function rather than two functions. That's how we deal with multiple solutions. So what does that mean for our mixing problem up above? For our mixing problem, for this y prime is equal to ay, you do what? What are the lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way up to lambda n eigenvalues of a? And then we have solutions, right? We would have y is equal to this e to the lambda 1 t x1 and y was equal to e to the lambda 2 t x2 and then we go up to y is equal to e to the lambda t n t x n. Right? We would write every single one of these solutions and then how do we write it? You just simply y is equal to a linear combo of So we just find them all independently, and so now, now what's nice is I don't actually have to solve this problem the hard way, right? We just simply jump straight to the answer. Find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvectors, write them as a function, and then just take any linear combination. Now, how did you find constants of it? That's the initial value problem, right? You give me one, you give me starting values, I can find those constants. So the next step that's an initial value problem. So next class we'll do the initial value problem.